it, it has a constant hum in the background, you know, like mm, sort of thing. Then when you activate the pedal, it can go, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, my name is Francis. Uh, now I'm 64 years old. But I'm not very happy. I'm going to get to the end of the day. Hi, my name is Sam Si. I'm 69 years old. And I've been diagnosed with uh, BBH. It's very difficult and it's very difficult for me. For example, why I'm sleeping every day is very difficult. Because I'm not sleeping every day. And my brain is always calling me to the hospital. So, it lasts for almost a week and the whole body is swollen. So, the whole body is swollen. So, I went to a GP. The GP gave me antibiotics, whatever. Then doesn't re really uh, cure it. So after four or five days later, uh, my children sent me to uh, Anteng Fong Hospital. That is where then I know what it's all about. But after the tumor, when they put the catheter back, also it doesn't stop me. Because with the back, I still move around. Uh, but of course, uh, my wife did design a, a back to conceal it. So in order not for me to, 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 to uh, shy, but so as not to affect others near to me, especially when during dining or eating out or whatever. Hi, uh, I'm Dr. Sarvajit. Um, I'm a urologist by profession and I work as a senior resident physician in, in Think Fong Hospital in Singapore. So BPH actually means uh, benign enlargement of the prostate. Prostate is a gland that men have. So um, uh, it affects men mostly over 50 years of age, and it's sort of like a natural aging process based on androgens and hormones and other inflammatory factors. The prostate gland enlarges and it causes a varying sim range of symptoms for men. So obviously when the patient comes to you in the clinic, they usually have these set of symptoms um, usually they can have symptoms such as poor urine flow, they're unable to empty out their bladder completely, they may feel like wanting to pass urine more uh, frequently or more at the night times. Um, so all these symptoms when the patient comes with, you also would want to uh, uh, rule out things like prostate cancer. So you would do some blood tests, uh, clinical examination. So based on these, you, you, you would probably diagnose a, a benign prosthetic hyper, hyperplexia. Yeah. Okay, so when uh, I told all this to, to, to my family, to be honest, they also doesn't know that what is all this thing about. So, but they are very supportive and, and, and they say that uh, just follow what the doctor advised you. So that, that is where uh, I, I leave it to. to all the, the to, to the doctor itself. I'm quite, you know, be positive about it because there's no point on falling back. But so I just move along, do my activities, but of course with the back. And in fact, uh, to certain event, to certain uh, uh, point that it is an advantage that I don't have to go to toilet. <laughs> 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 Then um, and the patient profile and the clinical parameters. So it can range from just conservative uh, management, uh, lifestyle exercise and things like that, to there are a lot of medical options, medical um, therapies available like medicines that the patient can take, which can help them um, improve the urine flow. There are some medicines which can also help uh, reduce the size of the prostate to a certain extent. And then of course, there are surgical options for the patient. Whole app is uh, basically 
when you use holmium laser for enucleation of the prostate. So it's based on the concept of enucleation, basically. So you have an obstructing adenoma of the prostate, which is a prostatic enlargement. So you use a, a laser technology uh, via endoscopic instruments. So basically you're putting a camera through the urine opening, going inside. Use the laser technology to cut out the prostate completely. And then you remove it uh, using a mosellator. So basically you're de-obstructing the urinary passage. Um, and that's how it works. So when I wake up, I think, I'm not sure even the, the length of the surgery. So they, when they push me to the wall, I don't feel anything. It's like that, did I, did I do a surgery? <laughs> I'm stuck. Even I ask, where is the cut? <laughs> so, uh, there is no pain at all, except when, when you pass urine. But the doctor did uh, tell me that passing urine, there's a sharp pain, it's going to last for like two, three months. So, I mean, after that, then it's like normal. Normal. It's like normal. Oh, wonderful. I mean, you, it, it is a little thing in life that passing urine is it's like people say that it is take for granted, but then it will cause you a big problem if, if you don't really uh, look into it. So in general, uh, uh, enucleation, endoscopic enucleation of the prostate uh, has been uh, shown to have a longer durability uh, and it is now the standard of treatment uh, accepted over all the international guidelines. Basically, which results in lesser op uh, operative time, um, faster recovery for the patient, lesser blood loss, um, and shorter catheter duration. So in effect, the patient gets to go home earlier um, and shortens the hospital stay as well. And the recovery of patients is also uh, sooner. Because you are completely enucleating the prostatic growth, um, so there is expected to have a mild uh, temporary, uh, what we call as a stress urinary incontinence. But this is usually very transient and temporary. And um, uh, we do educate them about some pelvic floor exercises which can enhance the recovery for, uh, for this issue. I think uh, uh, there's nothing really that we can do to prevent uh, a BPH, you know. It's, it's a, because it's a natural aging uh, process and it's associated with androgens and inflammation and things like that. Um, so education would play a role uh, in, in this uh, aspect. I think that it's really good don't wait. That's the thing. Don't wait. And unless you want to carry the bag for the whole life, then better get it done quickly. I guess my message to all the men out there who are about 50 years of age or 45, who are experiencing the uh, trouble with passing urine, uh, whatever the symptoms may be, and if they're troublesome, don't ignore it and don't be shy about it. Please go see a doctor or a specialist uh, who will help you with the appropriate treatment based on your symptoms.